Hi everyone, my name is Minas Yanekas and today I will be talking about my experience with building a native looking desktop app with Flutter for macOS and Windows. So a few things about me first, I am currently a self-employed app developer. My main background is uh, web development, but I discovered Flutter a couple of years ago and I have been using it constantly since for a mobile and desktop app uh, development. So for a quick overview, I am going to use as an example here a small desktop app I developed with Flutter called the Shortcut Keeper. It's now available on both uh, macOS and Windows and it features a native looking user interface for its platform. So let me bring it up here for a minute. It's a simple app in terms of functionality. Uh, so when you come across a, sh a shortcut that you want to remember and save, you open the app, you record the shortcut, for example, Command T, what it does, like create tab, the app it belongs to and you save it. It uh, helps with uh, keeping and uh, all your favorite keyboard shortcuts or the ones that you want to learn in one place. So my main point here will be that it is indeed possible to build an adaptive app with also native looking user interface for its desktop platform, focusing here on macOS and Windows. So an adaptive app, as its name says, is simply an app that adapts to the underlying platform, in our case the desktop operating system. It's mostly about respecting its platforms, idioms and norms, so how things are done or displayed uh, usually in its uh, operating system. It helps a lot with improving uh, the user experience since users expect apps that they use to behave similarly to other apps that they use daily on their system. So the classic example of this is how on macOS or Linux the confirm button is traditionally placed on the right side while it's the exact opposite for uh, the Windows. Another one of course is keyboard shortcuts. So when selecting the appropriate shortcuts for your app you need to keep in mind that command is the main modifier for uh, the macOS, for macOS, while control is the main one for Windows or Linux. There are also differences in how keyboard shortcuts are shown, are displayed, and which ones are traditionally used for certain actions. For example, the command comma shortcut for macOS, which on every app it uh, brings up the, uh, the app's preferences or settings. You wouldn't want to bind this to another action as it would be pretty confusing for users of your app. All these may seem to be small things, but they eventually make a difference on how the user perceives and uh, navigates throughout your app. You can of course configure this stuff and build an adaptive app with Flutter's default material UI or your own custom uh, design, but you can also take it one step further and try to go for a native looking user interface. So what's a native looking UI? It's simply a design for your app that not only respects the adaptive guidelines we set previously, but also tries to get closer to a native look and feel for each platform. For example, you can see here how similar our app looks on macOS with the other Apple-designed uh, apps on macOS, the Reminders and Notes apps. You can see here we follow the same layout concept with the sidebar on the left and the content on the right. We have a similar design for the search field here and in the top section we have uh, the Cupertino icons that look pretty similar to the other apps. The same can be said for Windows, so we can follow the same strategy. Again, you can look at the search bar which has a more rectangular design matching the one uh, for the Windows settings app. Uh, there is a line indicator to show which uh, menu item is currently selected and uh, the icons have labels. Uh, which is similar to how the mail app on Windows does. So this approach, building a native looking user interface, helps with building trust with users of your app. It also feels as a more natural UI that can easily navigate and be more productive with it. And it's an easy win for you too. You, can, uh, you immediately take advantage of each platform's best design practices. So as you might use the Material or Cupertino libraries to build an app for, to design an app for Android and iOS, it makes sense to adopt the corresponding design system for macOS and Windows. In this case, uh, the design guidelines can be found in the Human Interface Guidelines for macOS from Apple and the Fluent Design or Windows 11 Design Principles from Microsoft. You can check these resources to see the suggested design guidelines for its system 
uh, like how uh, a checkbox, a checkbox should look or how to handle opacity or animations uh, for your windows. Now let's see how we can get to a native looking UI with the Flutter for desktop. We mostly use two great packages to do that. Uh, the macOS UI package for macOS and the Fluid UI package for Windows. They both provide a wealth of useful uh, widgets like buttons, uh, drop downs, list styles, and so on, and also a basic layout scaffold to work from with the dialogues, uh, the correct opacity, animations for each system. They also provide uh, the default colors and uh, shadows that you can use for each version of your application. So the real challenge with Flutter is to get both these libraries mixed in the same code base, then to handle all the conditional logic of this integration, so what happens when the platform is macOS and what happens when it's uh, Windows, and of course to extend or customize its library in cases where some component or some functionality is missing. So let me now show you some methods that we can follow for this. First, in our main dat file, instead of material app, we build a macOS app or a Fluent app, depending on the platform. This is done simply with a conditional check, as you can see here, for if platform is macOS. This is required in order to be able to use its package's custom layout, its uh, widgets, its animations, and all the, all the default components that uh, both these libraries provide. We then create the so-called platform aware widgets. This uh, function as uh, simple forks, these stateless, stateless widgets here, that decide which platform-specific widget to build. So if platform is uh, Mac, Mac OS, we build a Mac OS text build. And if it's Windows, we build a text box. These are both provided by the Mac OS UI and the Fluent UI libraries. Uh, this render differently for each platform. For example, you can see here that the Mac OS version has, a more, uh, has more rounded corners, uh, while the Windows one has a different drop shadow. The same can be done for other components that already have widgets in uh, macOS UI or Fluid UI, like the confirm button here or the loading spin. This way we can use the platform text field widget that we, everywhere we need and pass the same properties and values, like the controller or the placeholder here, to increase our code reuse. This is pretty convenient, but since both the libraries are still in development phase, there may be situations where a component is missing from either the one library or both. For example, this was the case with uh, the drop-down button. There was no macOS styled widget for the macOS version of the app. So the app initially used the, the material theme drop-down button, as you can see on the right here. So what I did and what we can generally do in such cases is to extend the library based on Flutter's basic widgets. This means that we need to adapt it to the platform design guidelines so we try to replicate, to copy, the pop-up button from Apple's Human Interface Guidelines. You can see it here. It's a classic system-wide select used uh, in macOS. So we customize Flutter's drop-down button appearance and behavior, functionality, to implement the macOS pop-up button, which has a different design altogether. It has a characteristic double carré icon here on the right. It has, of course, macOS-themed uh, colors. Uh, also, there is no scroll bar when the menu is open, as you can see here. And there's a different behavior when there are not uh, items that are not visible in the menu. You can see here the final result of uh, our customization. And this way you can have a native looking uh, component that we can reuse anywhere we want in our application. With these simple strategies, we are able to build a simple Flutter desktop app like this that looks and behaves natively for each platform. You can see here the, some screenshots and comparisons for the final uh, result. On the left is the app on macOS and on the right is on Windows. So here is the main screen. You can see here the different font and typography used for each platform. Of course, screen and dialog animations are another one. So when we hit and open dialog here on the macOS version, you see that it has a white backdrop, while it's a darker one for Windows. These are both provided by default by using the macOS UI and Fluent UI libraries. Form elements, of course, like checkboxes, text fields, and uh, buttons are uh, also looking native and try to adapt to the underlying operating system. So you can see the difference here between each version. 
And of course, the one that we talked about in the beginning, the difference in the adaptiveness of, uh, the, adaptiveness of uh, the application. So the confirm button is here placed on the right side for the macOS version. Uh, it's the opposite for the Windows one. So let's see now some things to consider if you try to follow this approach. Uh, platform design, first of all, is uh, so how things look in macOS or Windows. It's changing all the time. It may also not be that consistent. Windows is probably more notorious for this. So you can see here five different uh, text box designs that you can find on uh, Windows. So you should know that uh, you may not be able to follow all native UI design 100%. I wasn't able to do this for my own app, of course, but it won't matter that much. So these uh, UI libraries and this approach can get you really far along the way to a native uh, UI by default. So users, users will not be that disappointed if, for example, your own text box has a slightly more rounded corners than uh, the one used in macOS. So if the core of your app's UI design looks and works great, don't fret it too much. And what about Linux? I haven't worked on importing this to Linux yet, but it's definitely possible. There's a Yaro package that tries to replicate the Ubuntu Yaro style. You can see some of its widgets here and uh, achieve the look and feel of Ubuntu desktop. So we can follow the same strategy by adding the YAR widget to our platform aware widget and add another check, like if platform is Linux, to build another platform design with a YAR themed uh, application. Finally, here are some resources that you may find helpful if you are going to try something like this. There is a great guide for building adaptive apps from uh, the Flutter docs. Uh, there are also the Apple and uh, Microsoft design guidelines we talked about previously. There are also these great packages you can use, the macOS UI, Fluent UI, Jaro packages, which are immensely helpful. There's also a package from uh, called the Bitch.jo window, which handles the, how the, uh, the Windows design of your app uh, looks. And of course, there's a plat Flutter platform widget package, which uh, follows a similar approach, a similar strategy, but for Android and iOS design. So the Material and Cupertino libraries. So if I, this was a short introduction on how we can leverage Flutter's desktop abilities and community packages to build a great native looking app easily for two different platforms, macOS and Windows. I hope you found this useful and I hope you try to follow and expand on this approach for your own apps as well. And that's my cut. I'll say goodbye from me. Thank you for listening. I am really happy to be able to do this. And a big thank you to Flutter Vikings for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much.